Hello, how's it going? Have you tried Affinity version 3 yet? If not, check out this video. This perfect for complete beginners. Take it step by step, learn just a few simple moves, be able to draw vector art. Alright, let's start by using the circle shape tool to create the face. There's no quick perfect circle gesture like Procreate, so for now just hold shift while drawing, or draw it first and double click the bounding box to fix it perfect circle later. Let's draw the eyes. Click insert inside the selection icon at the top. This button here is used to draw inside anything, whether it's a vector shape or a pixel layer. It works just like a clipping mask. If you forget to click it, you can just drag the layer and drop it onto the layer you want. In Illustrator, this is called Draw Inside and it works the same way. Hold Ctrl or use Ctrl plus J to duplicate it to the other side quickly. Take it step by step, then add nose and blush. To pick a color, use the color picker in the color panel, just click and drag to the color you want, then release. Use the pencil tool to draw the eyelashes, eyebrows, and mouth. Adjust the stroke width in the stroke panel. Notice how the stroke color and fill color are separated. Stroke is for the line, fill is for the inside color. If you're drawing lines, just turn the fill off. Add a little highlight to make it pop. Draw both ears using Draw Inside. I use Insert Inside the selection all the time. Okay, now that the face is done, select face, control G, group things into parts, like the head and body, separate them if you want. I'm gonna tweak the face a little. Hold control, drag the node up just a little so it doesn't look too perfectly round. Whenever you create a shape using the shape tool, Always convert it to curves first before editing the lines. Draw the hair. If you can draw the hair in one go, that's perfect. If not, just select both sides and use add boolean to merge them into one shape. Basically, anything that's the same color, just merge it. That way, when you add shadows later, you can control everything at once instead of fixing left and right separately. If it can be merged, just merge it. While drawing, make sure to turn off line style in the context toolbar at the top. Right now, we only want to use fill color. With vector work, there are always a lot of layers, so the layer order is very important. What's on top, what's underneath, Drag the layers up and down in the layer panel to arrange them properly. OK. Add anything you want. When we don't sketch first, it feels a bit slower like this. Have a reference, we can just follow it, knowing where to place the shirt, scarf, and other details. In drawing programs, you might draw the outlines first and then fill in the color, or sometimes flood fill the area. I think it's basically the same. I just use the pencil tool to draw instead of filling in color, that's it. Some people hear vector and think it's hard, actually not at all. At first, my workflow was a bit slow too. Take it one step at a time, you'll get the hang of it.
before you know it. After that, select everything, press Ctrl G to group it. This makes it easier to work with because in vector work, one single line is already one layer, and when you have a lot of lines, a lot of layers, so grouping helps you not get lost. Okay, use the pencil tool to draw lines inside her knitted hat. Don't forget to click the insert inside the selection icon. There are many ways to drawing coloring. Just pick what feels right for you. Try out different methods. For shading, start with the face, select the face shape, click insert inside icon. I'll use a stroke line pencil to shade small areas gently. For shadow color, I use the color picker to pick the base skin color first, then darken it by one or two steps, or use blend mode set to multiply for the shadows. For larger areas, I'll switch to using shapes and set the blend mode to multiply in the layers panel. Multiply works with black and white values. The darker it gets, the stronger the shadow. Use black and white for any color base areas. Be careful. If your shadow has a red tint and later change the main color to blue, the shadow color might not match the new color, so keep that in mind. Normally we don't change base colors that often, but I personally change colors a lot so I pay attention to this. If it's a clean vector cartoon style, you can keep using solid color shadows and highlights. But once you start adding effects to your shadows, like Gaussian blur, it immediately stops being 100% vector because effects are pixel based. So your artwork becomes a mix of vector and pixel right away. Now I mix both. One effect I use really often is Gaussian blur. It makes the shadow soft, kind of like an airbrush. When use it sometimes and skip it sometimes, the artwork might look a little inconsistent, but that's totally fine, I'm just showing you different techniques here. Okay, let's speed things up here. There's nothing complicated, just keep adding shadows and highlights, filling in little details as you go. Okay, now we can add extra details in the Pixel Studio to make more complete. Select the layer or vector shape you want. Click Insert inside the selection icon like before. Then pick a brush paint the details or texture. Affinity will automatically create a pixel layer inside that layer. Another method is using a clipping mask. Create a new pixel layer in the layers panel, drag it onto the layer you want to clip, and then paint. You all already know how to use a clipping mask, right? Remember the vector drawing steps well. 1. Draw the shapes. 2. Click the insert inside the selection icon to paint inside for the details. That's it. Normally, 
If you're good at another program, of course you'd say it's great, and you're right. But since this one is free right now, why not try something new? You might end up liking it. If you want more line work and coloring techniques, you can find them all in my Affinity for Drawing series on my YouTube channel. There are many methods you can adapt to your own style. Okay, this video might look like it has many steps, but once you understand the core idea, it's actually easier than pixel coloring in some cases. Alright, that's it for this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss the next videos. This is a step-by-step -step guide for beginners, try it out and let me know if it feels easy or difficult for you. Thanks for watching, see you soon.